we're going to do some fun stuff all about posing, fine tuning. But before we do that, and they can go to my presentation that I have for you, tell me if you experience this. You ever have your clients hate your favorite photos from a job? It's like you take a photo that looks like this and it's gorgeous and it looked good printed and on the cover of their wedding album. But for some reason, they put one of those on the cover of your wedding album and you're just like, no. Anyone? Yes. <laughs> Here's the problem. The problem is as photographers, we see lighting, we see composition and posing and uniqueness. But what do our clients see? And for that matter, what do you see when you look at pictures of yourself? You see your flyaway hairs, you see your pimple, you see your double chin, you think you look awkward or frumpy or body shape, bad expression. Those are the things that our clients see. Like this photo, for example. I adore this photo, but what's the one thing I know that she's looking at? Her pimple that's right above her right eye. And it's the funniest thing because this client, I sat down to do their engagement or uh, album session, and she almost didn't want this photo in her album. And thankfully, she said, oh, I, you know, I love that photo, but I have a pimple. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can retouch that. That's okay. But for some reason, even though they know about the, the miracle of things like Photoshop, they still look at photos like this and throw them in the trash, you know, throwing the baby out with the bathwater because of these tiny little things. So how do we combat this? We have to do our best to know our clients, first of all. We want to know them. If you were here yesterday, you, talk, you heard me talk a little bit about that. But we also have to set priorities. My priority as a photographer is going to be lighting and composition and something unique. But if my goal is to serve my client, then I have to think about their priorities. I recently got in a fight with somebody on Instagram, shocker, right? <laughs> about this photo that's on the right hand side. And I know it's kind of small. If you want to go to my Instagram at Vanessa Joy, it's one of the recent posts and you can see it. And his point was that, oh, well, it's a horrible photo and I expect it better from you, Vanessa, because their chins are not pointed, posed correctly. And he was absolutely right. However, I did have a photo where I corrected their pose, the one on the left, where I had told them to stretch their chins and I'll show you all that in a little bit. But which one do you think was their favorite? The one with the correct pose or the one with real expression? They love real expressions. So while I'm about to go for the next half hour or so showing you some posing fine tuning, I want you to keep in mind that expression is more important and the priorities of your client, that's what's more important. So we can bring out our models, Mark and Danielle. As they come out, we've got a beautiful couple to photograph and we're going to go with two different types of posing and then combine them. So we're going to do some feminine posing, some masculine posing, and then look at some of the common pitfalls that we all fall into when we are posing someone. We are using a Canon 1DX Mark III and I've got my 50 millimeter 1.2 on. I felt like this would be the best to show you the difference when we are fine tuning these little body parts as we're posing because it's not super compressed. It's about visual, what the eye sees. So you're really going to tell the differences between how we move our models around. Oh, you got such a lovely dress on. So come on out, you guys. Uh, as far as what we're doing for lighting, I always feel like I hide behind this for you guys. There we go. Um, I need the transmitter that's in the bag, I think. So I've got a B10 in here. And we have it attached with an umbrella. This is a large umbrella with a diffuser. Let me just spin this around so you guys can see. It's just a tiny little light here. Oops, there's a gel on it. Let's take that off. We don't want that till later. All right, but we are gonna use this to light them. And I'm gonna do very, fairly even 
lighting, kind of flat lighting. How many of you are natural light photographers? Yeah, a lot of us. Actually, technically, all of you should have raised your hands because we all shoot natural light. But what I'm getting at is that when we are shooting natural light, and a lot of us like to shoot kind of a flat type look, it actually is more important to pose correctly because we don't have the advantage of light shaping our subject quite as much. I'll do both for you so you can really see the difference. All right, so we've got our B10. Thank you. And I'm just going to have some kind of basic light on them. So let's spin this around to these guys. I'll raise it up so you can all see still. All right, and let's just get a basic exposure. Now, personally, I really enjoy getting an exposure in live view which is great because the 1DX3 is almost like a mirrorless camera inside a DSLR. And you have advantages of using live view. We can go over to the feed. There we go. So I can actually point it at them and change things like my white balance and see it in real time. I can change my shutter, see it in real time, and change the exposure, which is all things I like to do. For what we're going to do here, because we're using flash, I'm actually going to darken the exposure. So we're going to go to ISO 100, 250th of a second, and 3.5. And if I look, that's pretty dark. Notice, by the way, that the 1DX3 is having no problem focusing in complete darkness. Definitely a good feature. All right, I'm going to go to 4.5 just so I can have, again, a totally blacked out exposure for the most part. I see a little bit of her, can I press play? There we go. I see a little bit of her dress, but not, not a ton. We're okay. All right, now I'm going to turn on this light, just throw it into TTL and let it do its magic. You guys can just kind of hang out for a second. Now, Mark, you're going to get to hang out. You can sit down if you want to while well, we work with Danielle first. Now, whenever you start posing, you always want to work from the ground up. Again, there are caveats to this. I think before you start fine-tuning posing with your clients, you need to do things that are like icebreakers and get, getting them to move is really good. But for the purposes of what we're doing right now, we're going to be fine-tuning this. All right. Cool. All right, so that was just a basic exposure for them. Looks a little bit dark, so I'm going to go ahead and lighten that up a little bit. Can I hand this to you? Because it's... All right, so while I work with my client here, I either stand in front of them and have the mirror or I stand right next to them to get them to pose. So the first thing we want to do is work from the ground up. I'm going to pull your dress back a little bit. Is there a slit on both sides or just one? Just one. All right. Now, the dress makes a difference. So her slit is on this side. I want to show that off. That's a feature of her dress that she probably bought it for. So what I'll have you do is put your right foot forward. Let me help you out with the dress there. Nice. Good. All right. So your, her weight is lean on her back leg. So now you're going to just bend that front leg. Yep, bring it forward. And what we're doing here is creating what we call an S-curve. So it starts with the bottom, comes up this way, and it gives her shape. The other thing we want to consider, so you're going to be on this leg, but move your hips to that side. Wonderful, just like that. The difference between that, go ahead, turn your hips towards everyone here. We've got her, she's this wide here. Go ahead, turn your hips towards back of there. And now she's this wide. So as you turn her, you get an S-curve, and you're also slimming down her waist. Now, if you are not a woman, let me give you a hint. We always like to swim, <laughs> slim down our waist. I think the women are all laughing right now because they're like, yes, yes, we do. Good, cool. All right, the second thing we want to consider, so go ahead, kind of lean a little bit this way. You can put that front foot actually down so you're not killing yourself. Just lean on the back leg and bend this one a little bit. So you're bending. Good. All right? The next thing we want to do is we want to consider her shoulders. So your shoulders are also going to turn. Turn your hips a whole bunch this way. There we go. And then your shoulders can turn back towards me a little. That looks great. Let me turn this back on. All right. So her hips are facing this way. Her shoulders are coming back towards us. Your head is actually going to turn a little bit towards me. And then your eyes are going to go towards the audience. 
what you want to think about is changing the direction of every point in her body. Her hips one way, her shoulders another, her chin another, and her eyes another. So you've really got four different directions going on here. When I'm, yep, that looks good. So let's go ahead and take a picture here. All right, good. I'm gonna have you actually take a step to that white right there. All right, same exact pose. All right, so this is a good place to start. She looks great, but what are some things that we can do to improve this? I put her in a little bit more flat light. I'm gonna shoot from this way. There are a couple of things. You do me a favor, turn, put your hands all the way down. Yep, and you can turn towards me this way a little bit. Yeah, and hold on to your dress. A lot of times we'll ask people to hold onto their dress to kind of twirl it around a little bit. Kind of go here and then put your hand all the way down. Good. Right here, look at me. Good. All right. You're actually doing too good of a job being a model. Do me a favor, put your hand all the way down here. Let it relax. Yes, just like that. Good. So she knew what to do automatically, but this right here is another posing fine-tuning thing that you want to look out for. When her hand is down, I can't tell well where her waist ends and her arm begins. But go ahead and take a look at the picture beforehand. Her arm is out. How much more slim does her waistline look here as opposed to here? Big difference. So number two thing you want to consider is to always separate the arm from the waist. And sometimes it's just a matter of a little bend. Now the other problem with somebody having their arms straight down, let's exaggerate a little bit. Do me a favor, turn all the way towards these guys. Yep, hold your arms straight down and then look towards me. Good. All right, so right now she looks great, but what is the biggest, most noticeable thing in this picture? her arm, her shoulder. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, we've flattened out her arm right against her. So it gives like a pancake. But if she does a little bend, go ahead, grab your dress and just bend your elbow out. Right. I'm going to have you do it this way. Danielle's going to kill me because she knows I'm doing it incorrectly on purpose. <laughs> All right. So sometimes we do this. Go ahead and look at me again. All right, and we just bend the elbow out. But what happened? That didn't solve our problem either. It still looks larger because it's the closest thing to the camera. And when you're working with a, a millimeter, a focal length, like a 50 millimeter, it's going to accentuate that. So we need to do one more thing. What you're going to do, go ahead, pick up your dress, bend it a little in your arm, and then lean towards me this way. And then chin this way a little, right there, and eyes up to me. Now her face is the first thing I see. So we went from here to there. Just a little bit of a change of an angle will make the biggest difference in the world. Now, with that in mind in the posing, let's switch the light just a little bit because the lighting also has a lot to do with this. So what I'm actually going to do is take this light and we're going to put it right about there. I'm going to have you take a step forward, Danielle right about here. That should be good. Go ahead and turn that way one more time. Bend this elbow back and you're going to look, look right off towards the corner of the room. Head a little bit more towards me. Keep going. Yep. But eyes over there and then tilt your body towards me. Good. So now I've done all of these three different things, but I've also changed the lighting. Look at the difference between that where it was a flat lighting and everything is kind of just blown out, even some of the detail of that very expensive dress that she paid for. Now when I turn the light to the side, I see all the detail there. And let's try it actually totally the other way. Turn, turn uh, all the way this way. Yep, turn towards me. And actually look kind of past me towards these guys. You can bend that elbow, shoulder down a whole bunch, and lean towards me. All right, so the other way, it's even more so. 
you see so much more detail. So your lighting plays a big factor in your posing. Let me take that picture one more time because I want to change where your eyes are. See how far off her eyes were looking and how you can see more of the whites of her eyes than anything else? We want to change that. It's the same exact thing. Lean towards me a whole bunch and turn your shoulder and then with your eyes, look here. Come here, come here, come here. Just your eyes right there. And then eyes down that way. And then your whole body turn this way. Yes, right there. Eyes to me. Good. All right. Now we have pictures that are really flattering, not only to her, but towards the dress and the detail and everything else. All right. Now let's switch this and we'll do this for Mark. So now you get to have a seat, Danielle. Mark, you're going to come up here. Now, let's start off with the same thing where we've got flat light. So, Mark, you're going to take a little step this way and face me here. I'll turn this a little bit, right about there. And, guys, you want to do very similar things with a more of a masculine type pose. You still want to separate their feet, have them lean on the, on the back leg. <laughs> All right, turn a little bit this way, almost like you're standing on a skateboard. Yep. Lean on your back leg this way and point your front foot towards me. Just like that. Good. Now, he's going to stay here. I'm not going to make him do the S-curve. We don't need an S-curve on Mark. But you can go ahead and keep your hands all the way down by your side. You're going to look right at me. And let's start right there. So right there, he looks okay, but nothing is really happening. Nothing is very, I mean, you're super handsome. <laughs> but it's not very dynamic. So let's keep going. Now, he's not going to have a dress right now because he's wearing pants. You can put your hands in your pants pocket. And we want to do the same thing where we are separating the elbow from the waistline for all the exact same reasons. Let's take another picture there. Good. All right. This is looking pretty good. I actually have you not quite as flat lit as I wanted. But we still want to do one more thing. His shoulders and his chin are in the same direction. So for guys, you want to tilt their head towards the low shoulder is what it's called. But the way that I think of it is think of you with hair. And if you tilt towards the low shoulder, your hair just kind of falls down. The opposite would be as if you flipped your hair, and that's turning it towards the high shoulder. So Mark your low shoulder. You can go ahead, tilt it a little bit that way. I'm going to make you do both so everyone can see. Good. Now tilt it this way. He's like, dear God, no, please. <laughs> All right. This is tilting it towards the high shoulder. That is towards the low shoulder. That is considered a more masculine type pose as opposed to this one, Danielle would look great in. All right. Now let's just mess with the light a little bit more. I'm going to have you take a step this way, right about there, and turn your head all the way towards me. And you've got a good head tilt going on there. Turn your shoulders towards me a little bit more that way. Nice. Good. Now it's a little bit more dramatic. I'd like to have a reflector to kind of fill him in a little bit, but I don't have one with me. So all I need to do is tilt his head a little bit more towards the light. So right about there. Good. Right there. Now with that, do we have a camera battery? Now with that, we have a perfect head tilt. Look how accentuated his jawline is with that too. All right. So we figured out how to fine tune posing a guy, fine tune posing a girl. What do we do when we put them together? We want to do both of those things combined. And switch our battery. Thanks. All right. So Danielle, come on over. Mark, you're staying here, too. So when I'm going to pose the both of them together, I have to think of where my light is. I want the light going into both of their faces. I want her kind of tilted towards the high shoulder, him tilted towards the low shoulder. So I'm actually going to switch your places. And Danielle, both of you guys are going to go ahead and lean on the back leg. Good. You can put your back arms around each other, so get nice and close. 
turn your hips towards each other a little bit more. So now what have I done? Just automatically knowing where my light is, I am lighting more of her coming across this way. So I'm going to get all this detail in her dress while I've broad lit his chest and it's going to make him look more manly. So that's why I decided to switch them instead of doing it the other way around. Mark in this, in this circumstance is going to be able to lean his head down to her and have his head lean towards the, high, uh, the low shoulder. But Danielle, you're actually going to, I'm going to use the force on your face. Do you guys know this trick? You just, you know Star Wars? Yeah? Is anyone here a Star Wars fan? Oh, okay, because I have some baby Yodas over here to give away. <sighs> this, along with this fabulous tie, is uh, Canon's reusable peel and stick. So, I'll give one of these away. Who can tell me what this is, Baby Yoda's from? Mandalorian, good, come on up, you get a Baby Yoda. And then who can finish this sentence for me? Or scene, I love you. I know, <laughs> good job. Okay, back to photography. All right, so we're going to bend your elbow. You can kind of hold on to your dress right there. And we're going to take Danielle. We're going to use the force with her to just have her turn her head. So pretend I'm using the force on your head. You're going to turn it this way and tilt in towards him. And now she's tilted towards the low shoulder right now. But if I want, I can take the force and tilt you this way. Get your heads a little closer together. Good. And Danielle, you're going to turn your nose that way a little more. Good. Right about there. Now let's see how this turns out. I'm going to move this a little bit more this way. Let's take a look. All right. A couple things I want to fix. What do we need to fix? Hands. Yep. Now, when it comes to posing and fine-tuning posing, hands are where you can really tell. Because hands are very difficult to pose unless you happen to be posing a dancer or posing a, um, a gymnast or a, a ballet dancer. Hands are a little bit difficult. So here's what we do. Go ahead and drop your hand all the way down. And what I want you to do is take your middle finger, and you're going to just touch your middle finger and just slowly bend your elbow. Yep. Now relax your wrist right there. So we want a nice, and you can actually grab a hold right there. Just kind of relax. Good. I want to see more of the side of her hand right there. Bend your fingers a little bit. You can bend. Yep. There you go. That's perfect. Yeah. So she has an answer, so that's helpful. But you want to see more of the side of the hand versus the palm. And we definitely don't want a scrunch happening in her dress. So that looks lovely. The other thing I'm going to do is just move the slate a little bit more here. Right about there should look good. And Danielle, right now, her face is not quite where we want it to be. And it was also shading Mark's face. So I fixed the light. We should solve both those problems. You can tilt your heads a little closer together. Danielle, you're going to make your nose go this way, and then both of you guys look at me. Wonderful. Much, much better. Except, Danielle, we've got too much of a head tilt going on for you, so you can come back a little bit. Good. Nice. Now, this is officially the most traditional pose you will take the entire day of the wedding. This is the one they'll put on the cover of their album, because that's the one that they'll like. I always say, I'm going to take this photo so that your mom has the photo she wants. But now let's go ahead into the picture that everyone takes. What do you do when you have a couple? What's the first thing you do? You say, yep, kiss, right? Or you say, go ahead, stand next to each other, put your arms around him there and arms around their waist. That's your typical pose. And then what happens? Let's take a picture. I'm going to flat light it a little bit more. Right about there. Actually, let me exaggerate it. Let me get a little closer. Good. All right. What happened? We have Danielle's arm is, again, the closest thing to the camera. They're doing a good job sticking out their chins, but normally our clients don't do that. So let me tell you how to make this pose 100 times better every time you do it. Go ahead, right back into the position. 
the first thing you want to do is you want to take her hand and tuck it in here. You also want to take his hand and have him hold on to there. Right away, if they were actually hugging, that's a position that they would get into. We have a couple things that are happening here. I'm going to lower your grip right there. She has her elbow in an acute angle. That portrays psychologically like vulnerability. It's nice and dainty. Meanwhile, for Mark, his shoulder is at a right angle. And a right angle portrays strength, right? Think of how you like hold heavy stuff. You do it at a right angle. So right away, we are showing she's nice and sweet and dainty. He's wonderful and strong and keeping her safe. But we've also chopped her arm in half because of his hand here. And we've eliminated the problem where her arm is the closest thing to the camera because we've tucked it in. Now, the last thing you want to tell your clients, usually tell them to look at each other. And unless they're models, they usually do this, right? Because who looks at each other that closely? So instead, give them something else to look at. You're going to go ahead and look right here at his um, bow tie. And then you're going to look right at this wonderful little piece of hair. Because ultimately, when you're involved with somebody, you don't necessarily just stare lovingly into their eyes, right? You sort of e examine their whole face in a way. Like, and you, we look around. So having you look at each other is great, but having them look around in different spots is a little bit better. Do me a favor. Just look at each other's eyes. Nice. And now, Danielle, you're going to look, look at like this top part of his hair right here. And Mark, you're going to look at her lips. Nice. And then now slowly start to stick your chins out towards each other. Get closer together. Closer. Closer. Can you smell each other's breath yet? Yeah? <laughs> Cute. <laughs> and that's what I'm going for. So I usually start off by posing them and having them more serious. Look at the difference. That's, is that the one? This is the one. They're looking at each other's eyes. But then as we slowly tell them different places to look, get closer, get closer, and then you make a joke, and now it's something completely different. So all of those little fine-tuned things are going to help a bunch. Now, I don't want you to get hung up whenever you're posing somebody thinking about, oh, this is a masculine pose, this is a feminine pose, or even if you have same-sex couples trying to figure out, like, which to put in what. Instead, put them in a position just to start and tweak and fine tune. And then you say, hey, guys, just kind of melt there and add some kind of movement. And their couple style is just going to come out. But knowing the little fine tuning things that are going to make anyone look good will really help you. All right. Let's do one more thing. I want to give you guys something a little bit more dramatic. What do I have here? Uh, let's go ahead and turn this on. And we're going to turn this off. Let's take the pose that we have right here of them. And I want to show you how basically that same exact pose with a little bit more dramatic lighting will make all the difference in the world. And not even dramatic. Just give yourself a little bit more shadow to play with. So you guys are going to go in that same exact position, but you're going to slowly turn towards me and turn. Oh, you know what? I lied. You're going to slowly turn this way and this way and this way. And they're so good at this. <laughs> nice. Danielle, take a step towards me. Good. Get nice and close right there. We're going to look at all the same types of things. So we're going to tuck her arm right in here. We're going to have, yep, arm right there. You guys are both going to look towards this light. This one's going to flash, but this is the light you're looking at. I'm going to go back to TTL here. And do me a favor, do all the wrong things. So I'm going to have your hand here. And go ahead and look at each other. I'm going to test the light first. All right, that's okay. I want it a little bit less uh, hitting the background, so I'm just going to take this, point it away from the background. Now, it looks like I'm not even pointing it at them, but I am. 
because this little part of the light is still hitting them, but I just don't want to hit as much of the background. So let's try that one more time. Much better. All right, so right now, they're kind of looking at each other. I see the back of her arm the most. He's doing one of these scrunchy things. So let's fix this. I'm going to have you guys both look this way. You're going to tilt your heads together. But instead of them looking, you know, off yonder into their future, Danielle, you're going to look towards his hand. Stick so your chin out. Mark, take a baby step out this way. And instead, you know what? Take your hand, her hand and just hold it here, and you can look at her hand. So tilt your head in. That looks good right there. Now they're nice and engaged and with each other. But now look how feminine she looks. Look at his jawline, masculine, both their eyes going there. And instead of staring at each other, what are they doing? They're embraced. They're with each other. Oh, we have a print. Oh, Mark. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Woohoo. Now, what's this one printed on? The 2100. That is sharp. That detail that you get is so much fun with this camera. Thank you. All right, so that is all I have for you guys today. If you want to learn more about the types of flash and things that we've done here, uh, I am going to have a book over at the Rocky Nook booth. There were 100 advanced copies sent here today or for WPBI. There are only about 30 left. So if you want to grab any of them, learn more about Flash. And thank you guys for coming and joining us here at WPPI with Canon.